Hey, you weirdos, it's Chuck Cassidy here in my practice room with all my shit. Today, I'd like to start out with a shout out to a couple of YouTubers that I've been following recently. One is called Rick Beato, who does a segment called What Makes This Song Great? So he's an accomplished musician and producer himself, and he takes contemporary and classic rock songs and breaks them down bit by bit and explains why they're amazing, okay? The other guy is called Pat Finnerty. He's a bit newer to the scene, and he does a segment called What Makes This Song Stink? So he takes a highly popular, horrible song and explains exactly why it sucks. And I find myself watching that channel more because I'm you know, a self-loathing, unemployed alcoholic who uh, has had no success in the industry. So. Um, it makes me feel better as a musician um, looking at people who have made a lot more money than me and then seeing somebody very eloquently and precisely break down why they suck. And so that's the channel I've been watching. However, it seems to me there's a segment missing from YouTube that should be called What Makes This Song Just Okay? Right? So somewhere between great and stink lives just okay music. So. In starting this series on the Chuck Cassidy Music YouTube channel, I thought I'd start out with one of my own songs, a highly unsuccessful song called Silent City. So get ready to rock. Kind of. So we're going to start with the intro to the song, which you have just heard. Now, it's kind of cool, number one, because it was conceived on the bass guitar and not the electric guitar, the six-string guitar, where most rock songs are usually conceived. Um, so that's kind of cool. The other thing is it uses distorted bass throughout the song, in fact, um, which for a, a country-sounding southern rock song is a little unusual, so that's kind of cool. Now, the kind of not-so-cool part is it's sort of a rip-off of a typical country music trope, which is a, a slidey thing where they start with the root. That slide. They do that in a lot of country songs. In fact, almost all of them. So that's kind of lame. But I changed the scale of it a little bit, did the same slidey thing, so it wouldn't sound so country. So it goes slowly, goes like this. All right, some different notes in there. I'm not going to explain the theory behind it because I don't even fucking understand it. So um, the whole riff is. Okay, so I'm changing from major to minor key in the middle. Uh, I'm not going to do Rick Beato here, so don't worry. Um, so for that, those reasons combined, I think the opening riff is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah thinking I should have left that part out. Uh, I think a nice guitar part would have been better in that section. I, I, I think I was trying to fire up my imaginary listeners, because to this point, all of my listeners are imaginary, in fact. Okay, so the lyrics. Probably the best aspect of the song, if I do say so myself. It deals with some heavy topics that a lot of people go through. Uh, depression, wondering what you're doing here what the hell is going on in this world, it kind of says it all, you know, one of those songs. Um, I wrote it at a time when I was feeling a little bit down, so it was very cathartic to write that. From a poetic standpoint, it's full of metaphor, it's got literal language, and it doesn't always rhyme, which is good. Songs that rhyme all the time piss me off, and they should piss you off too. No one left to see you. That was a 
snippet of the guitar solo, which is kind of a slow, rhythmically correct, tonically correct pile of shit. But it was at a time when I was not really playing guitar much. I was playing almost exclusively bass. So, you know, if you, if you don't like the solo, go fuck. Now, the lame guitar solo is slightly made up for by the interlude that comes just after, which is all distorted bass, a real simple guitar line, and probably the best line in the song, which is, innocence is no excuse, time won't wait or say goodbye, which basically means, get over yourself, nobody gives a f So break down the singing a little bit. In general, it kind of sucks. I was trying to put on a raspy voice that isn't quite natural for me. Um, but there's a lot of heart, a lot of emotion in it. So combining those things, it makes it just okay. Last but not least, the length of the song. At only 3 minutes and 11 seconds, it's not my longest song. So if I get drunk at a party and push you into a corner and force you to listen to it, at least you know you won't miss the whole party, right, if you think it sucks. So thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe. There are many more videos to come. I have ideas coming out of my ass like you can't believe. And feedback, comments are welcome. Uh, maybe you could help me become good enough to be included on a Why This Song Stinks video. That would be wonderful. I need the publicity. So help me out. All right, cheers. Take care. Hey, sorry, one last thing before I finish here. Uh, if you're a musician, especially a guitarist or bass player, you probably noticed, if you're really paying attention, that my bass is not tuned normally. So I was playing an F sharp here, which is not where the F sharp normally is, right? It's up here. And this is a C sharp, because I tune B, E, A, D. Whereas most bass players tune E, A, D, G, or somewhere near. Now, why do I do that? It's none of your fucking business.